Chinese firms are ramping up efforts to create a rival to NVIDIA's AI chips. But the country's semiconductor industry is facing mounting challenges. Arjun has been looking into who the front runners are in China to offer competition to NVIDIA and the challenges they face. Arjun, all we've heard so far of the amount of NVIDIA chips that have found their way into China. So this is a different story as to how China is trying to gear up for the future. Yeah, I've been spending the week looking at you know who are the leading players in China in terms of GPUs. These are the chips NVIDIA uh, designs and that are in their data center products. And there's a number of companies speaking to analysts that have popped up. Huawei uh, being one of them, Alibaba and Baidu, which are designing uh, their own chips to go into data centers. Biren Technologies, which is uh, designing these general purpose GPUs, as well as the software, and we'll come on to that because that's a key point. Cambricon Technologies, More Threads, and Enflame. These are the names that have popped up in some of the conversations I had. Uh, some of them are startups, such as Enflame, uh, which is backed by Tencent. More Threads, another one as well. Others like Huawei and Alibaba, of course, very established um, you know, and deep-pocketed players as well. I do want to spend a little bit of time speaking about Huawei because when I was asking these analysts who are the leading players, Huawei was very much front and centre here with a series of products it calls Ascend. These are its data center products, very similar uh, to what NVIDIA uh, does as well. And the Wall Street Journal recently reporting that Huawei is gearing up to launch a new version of its Ascend products, which it claims uh, could be on par with NVIDIA's H100 chips. This is one of the leading chips from NVIDIA at the moment. But also with, with Huawei, they're very keen on pushing the software side. And this is incredibly important. One of the reasons NVIDIA has such a stronghold in this market is due to a software platform called CUDA, which is effectively something that developers can build on top of. So it's built this ecosystem around its products, and this is something Huawei has experienced in over the past few years with Harmony OS, which is its software in the mobile space, and it's clearly trying to build software as well on the chip front. A very obvious question for me would be energy, because the NVIDIA chips are energy intensive, and we know China over many years has been trying to tackle the E out of the ESG, it's been trying to take down some of the energy demands, and as we talk about an AI-enabled world with massive energy demands, surely if it's starting from scratch, China would want a less energy intensive chip. Yeah, so energy efficiency is key because you want these high-powered processes to be able to run but not use as much energy. That becomes a lot more important, I think, uh, beyond the data centers. We start to talk about AI being processed on devices like smartphones and laptops. That's an uh, incredibly important part of the equation. But at the moment, where China seems to be playing is in this data center. It's trying to first, what it feels like, is come up with chips that are on par from a processing point of view with NVIDIA before tackling perhaps the energy efficiency part of the equation. It's certainly something a lot of these companies have spoken about. If you look at uh, some of the, the, their websites and some of their product descriptions, but right now it's about how can we create a chip uh, that can be on par with the processing uh, that NVIDIA can do with its GPUs. So um, everybody is rushing to catch up. This is almost like the Tesla trade, isn't it? Everyone rushing to catch up on electric vehicles as well. Um, it is very clear that others have caught up with Tesla in many, many ways. Of course, they've got other assets as part of their company. But in terms of making cars, they've caught up. How long is the time period before the Chinese, before the Western rivals catch up with NVIDIA, which then, of course, will impact the investment decisions of our viewers as well? Because they will catch up. It's just a question of timing, isn't it? At this point, the, the, the U.S. players in particular and AMD really uh, have a better chance of catching up than the Chinese players. I think China has a very unique set of challenges in its semiconductor industry, and there's three major ones. The first are the number of U.S. sanctions and export restrictions we've seen on the Chinese on sector. Machines, on Prince. those lithography machines, yeah. exactly, and various other ones. Many firms like Huawei, like Biren, a couple of the firms I've mentioned are on this U.S. entity list, effectively restricting them from access to U.S. technology. That could hold back development. On top of that, you mentioned the restrictions on lithography machines who are going to make these Chinese design chips is got to be SMIC, China's biggest manufacturer, not TSMC due to some of these restrictions. Problem is SMIC's technology is generations behind TSMC, so getting to the leading edge, the cutting edge of, of chips is very difficult, but also capacity. We've heard uh, stories about Huawei bringing out new phones using a 7 nanometer chip, which is not the most advanced chip on the market, but that's taking up a lot of, a lot of SMIC's capacity. So all these chip players rushing in saying, please make my chips, SMIC just doesn't have the capacity. And the final challenge here really is what I mentioned earlier, is that software piece of the puddle, NVIDIA's success 
has uh, been built not just on the hardware but also on its ability uh, to create this developer platform. That's something that's going to be a big challenge for these Chinese players to replicate. So no challenge really from China in the near term, but what you can see are the early stages here of an industry trying to build up its own domestic prowess. A couple of things that jump out here. Over the last couple of years, we're talking about China being highly critical of the amount of investment uh, that the Chinese companies were making, technology companies, into, say, social media, into uh, ga gaming, into areas that the, the state just didn't see as beneficial to society. And they wanted the money, the focus, to be on things like semiconductors, uh, EVs, solar panels, and industries for the future. So interesting to see the amount of attention now that these companies that we've been talking about in a different vein now having to double down on AI. But the other big point, of course, that it's Huawei, a company that was upended by these U.S. sanctions, really suffered big time in the smartphone market. And if it can be at the forefront of AI as an NVIDIA of China, this would be a remarkable turnaround in fortunes. It, it really would. And, you, and you've seen the early stages here of, of Huawei's sort of turnaround in the smartphone space, bringing out uh, devices that look pretty innovative with semiconductors that people had thought U.S. restrictions ha had meant not possible. Uh, and, and it's a similar uh, situation here, I think, on the semiconductor front. There's a lot of support, of course, from the state in term, in, in the, to these companies, into the semiconductor sector. China has, very similar to the CHIPS Act, a big fund of its own to invest in semiconductors and semiconductor companies. And so deep-pocketed companies like Huawei are the ones that will have the best chance, if anything, in China of trying to provide a viable alternative domestically uh, to NVIDIA.